In this special Cricut Christmas project, we are customizing and making our very own door hanger with a Cricut. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael and this is Mr. Crafty Pants. And today we are diving into the Craftmas Ultimate Mega Mystery Box. Y'all, this one on sale about a week, week and a half or so ago. And this thing sold out so freaking fast, y'all. Less than 24 hours, 2,000 boxes. It was insane. So we're diving into this. Now, if you did not get one of these boxes, it's all right. You can still watch the episode. You can still watch the video because there might be a lot that you can pick up and learn. And heck, maybe you can even find your own similar materials and make this yourself. So to get started, we are using some, some pieces of vinyl that were exclusive to the box. So this is plaid tidings right here in the green and then also in the red and we're also using another custom custom piece from the box again this was exclusive to the box as well and that is this little door hanger right here or what will become a door hanger so this is going to be like one of those old time vintage sleds so we have like the little sticks here whatever you whatever you call it like the rails i don't know what this i don't know what it's called but y'all y'all will get the drift and if you don't get the drift now once this comes together you'll know what i'm talking about um, but also need some other items which we'll get to when we get to them but for starters what i'm going to do is go ahead and hop over here to cricut design space all right so this is one of the files we're using this was also exclusive to the box now if you don't like this file that's a-okay. There are plenty of other SVG files that are exclusive to the box that you have access to. So be sure to check that out. There will be a video down in that description box below that shows you not only how to access the files, but also how to download them and get them into Cricut Design Space. So this is what we're using today. Now, this is set up a little bit differently. I did design this because it is a larger file, I did design this so that we can actually save materials. So the red up here is separated from the red down here, and then the green for the little holly branches is separate as well, which to be honest, it's gonna make it a lot easier to go ahead and actually do it that way. And it's also gonna save us on materials as well. And also let me point out that the files that are under the door sign category are already basically pre-sized to fit perfectly on to our door hanger so i would still i would still double check to make sure that it is sized correctly for example this is about a foot tall and about i don't know a little over seven and three quarters of an inch close to eight inches wide so let's go ahead and come up here to the top right hand corner because we don't need to do anything with this and click on make it all right, so this is just the mat preview screen showing us a preview of how everything's gonna come out on the mat. Everything's looking good there. And so let's go ahead and come down here towards the bottom right and click on continue. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my Cricut Maker started. Now, you may have already guessed that for the red layer, we're gonna be using that red and black plaid tidings. And for the green layer, we will be using the green and black plaid tidings. But for the black layer, we're just gonna be using the StarCraft HD by far the best vinyl that is currently on the market and it's so affordable as well. For anything from 143vinyl.com, you can actually use my code CRAFTY, C-R-A-F-T-Y, to actually save money on your order and it will also help support this channel at the exact same time. So let's go ahead and come over here and I'm actually gonna be cutting this out using the vinyl cut setting. Uh, the premium vinyl permanent glossy cut setting would work out as well. As far as how to actually place this onto the cutting mat, I would go ahead and place it basically like this, where the little white strip over here on the side is over to the right hand side of the cutting mat, and basically line it up to where everything that's gonna be cutting out is gonna be perfectly on that red and black plaid area. But with that being said, I do already have this all cut out and weeded out and ready to go. So what I'm gonna do now is actually go ahead and paint our door signs. Now. For our door signs, I'm gonna basically paint the main portion white and the little rails underneath of the sled, I'm gonna paint those red. Now, if you did wanna go ahead and leave this as a natural wood, I wouldn't blame you, it is gorgeous as is. All I would do is go ahead and add the StarCraft Pure Coat right here. And as you can see right here, I am adding that on top of the paint once the paint is dry. 
All right, so here is everything once dry. Here are the rails for the underside of the sled. And I'm basically gonna go ahead and just lay these out like so. We wanna get them lined up as straight as possible before we take the main portion of our sled and kind of line that up on top. And we do wanna go ahead and make sure that this section, this part of the sled is down low enough to where basically we're gonna have room to put the little handle section. I don't know what this is called, but y'all know what I mean. Basically we'll have enough room to actually put this up here at the top. All right, so I think that this is looking good. We have the red down here popping out and showing at the bottom of the sled. We have the little handle bar up here at the top. Basically, we're good to go. All I'm gonna do is go in here and actually use some extra strength, like some heavy duty hot glue to secure all of this in place. You should also have like this little rope, this little piece of twine included in your box as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and just put this through the little handle and then just tie it off in a knot. All right, I'm gonna go in here and just trim a little bit off of the end of this piece of rope. And just because I'm not sure how much I, I trust my knots, what I'm gonna do is actually flip this over to the back and then take a little piece of hot glue and kind of secure this twine, this rope into place a little bit more. All right, so let me go ahead and grab my transfer tape now. Let's go ahead and unroll this a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and what I like to do is typically start off with the largest piece of vinyl. So in that case, I think it's this one right here. So what I'm gonna do is actually take our transfer tape, lay it down onto the table here with the sticky side facing up towards me. And then I'm gonna grab this right here and actually lay it down face first onto that transfer tape. Just gonna grab a little squeegee. You can also use like a credit card or like a gift card if you don't have a squeegee. And then we'll grab the corner of uh, the, the backing paper right here and then slowly peel that away. You can also always go ahead and pull back up design space where you can actually see the entire design. And so you also remember how it's all supposed to be laid out. All right, something I'm right there looks good. Let's go ahead and grab the squeegee. Burner that down and then grab the corner of that transfer tape and then peel that away slowly. And whenever it comes to applying vinyl to wood, I highly, highly recommend going over it with a coating like the Pure Coat or just a polycrylic would do the trick as well. Um, basically you want to give the wood a nice smooth surface if it doesn't have one already so that the vinyl can actually grab onto it and cure onto it. All right, so next one up is the reindeer. We'll go right here in the center. I'm using the same piece of transfer tape. I love this stuff. It's a StyleTech clear medium tech transfer tape. It's just really, really good. All right, let's go ahead and lay this out. Now let's go in here for the little bottom section. All right, so our little holly branches, I still need to go in here and actually cut each little section out. And again, same piece of transfer tape. I'm gonna go in here and just actually lay down each little piece of this. And then let's go in here and actually line this up to where the little, the little berries is actually basically sticking off the branches of the holly. Now, what I really love about the pattern vinyl is that it adds like a little pop, a little bit of extraness to it. And y'all know I'm extra. Y'all know I'm extra. It just honestly takes it to the next level. Also notice that I am actually applying all the vinyl down to the transfer tape and then peeling the backing off of that vinyl. I'm not using the transfer tape and trying to lift the vinyl up off of the backing. Again, I'm applying it down and then lifting the backing off of the vinyl. It just works so much easier that way. You don't have to worry about messing anything up in most cases. Um, it just, it's perfect in my opinion. Now here's the thing with a permanent vinyl on wood like this, you do not need a top coat over top of the vinyl. Give the vinyl a few days, let it cure and adhere down to its surface and it'll be good to go. It will last for years and years and years. 
basically outdoors. Now, this is obviously seasonal. You're, it's not gonna be out all the time. So this should last a very, very long time. Hey, thank you so much for watching this special Craftmas episode. Don't forget to stamp that subscribe button and also ring that little bell for all the notifications so that y'all don't miss out on a single cricket or crafty minute. I love y'all to the freaking moon and back and until next time, stay crafty.